Hey guys, there has been a theory that's been going around for a while that proposes that the long-term dimming of Tabby star may be due to a planetary collision with the star. We want to show you why this does not seem to correlate with what has been observed and proven in our last few videos. The theory states that at first Tabby star was a normal, middle-aged, stable F-class star, and sometime in the past, a large planet was on a trajectory that took it too close to Tabby star. As the planet approached, it was drawn into Tabby star by an intense gravitational pull and a collision ensued. The collision caused Tab Tabby star to swell and become brighter. The theory goes on to say that Tabby star is slowly recovering from that collision and its brightness continues to dim as the star goes back to its original equilibrium state that is, the state before the collision occurred. And it will take many decades, if not centuries, before it goes back to its original brightness. This was their explanation for the long-term dimming. We have to give them an A for creativity, but it doesn't fit, and I'll show you why. So in nature, when something that is at its equilibrium state is excited by an abrupt energy pulse, like say a planet colliding with a star, its energy level rises abruptly. And then that energy state begins to exponentially decay as time goes on until it reaches its original stable equilibrium state. There are many examples of this curve in nature. For example, the exponential decay of a bell after it has been struck the exponential decay of fluorescence as the excited gas molecules move back to their original equilibrium state, the discharge of a capacitor to its equilibrium state, and the cooling of a heated body like a hot cup of coffee as it moves to its equilibrium state, which is the room temperature. In the case of a star, if a planet collides with a star that is at its equilibrium state, a large impulse of energy by this collision will cause the energy state of the star to abruptly rise to a higher level and the star will swell and become brighter in a relatively short span of time. The star then begins to shed off this extra energy as it becomes dimmer and dimmer over decades to centuries. But this is important. The way it becomes dimmer is in an exponential decaying profile. This means that the rate of dimming over time will become less and less as time goes on. In other words, the dimming rate will deaccelerate as time goes on. So here is a chart of the measured long-term dimming rates for Tabby Star across different time periods. This is the same data that we presented and discussed in our last video dated June 5th. What we are going to do this time, however, is show a graphical representation of these measured long-term dimming rates. The first and oldest long-term dimming measurements of Tabby Star were derived from old photographic plates across a 99-year period. The long-term dimming rate was averaged from this data at 0.14% per year. So let's represent this slope by a red line. The vertical and horizontal lines represent the rise and run respectively. The second and next most recent measurements of the long-term dimming of Tabby Star were taken from Kepler and averaged to be 0.341% per year. So let's represent this second dimming rate by a red line whose slope is proportional to the first slope above. This provides us with an accurate graphical comparison between two measured dimming rate slopes. The third and next most recent measurement of the long-term dimming of Tabby Star were derived from Bruce Gary's 700-day graph and calculated to be 0.760% per year. So let's represent this third dimming rate by another red line whose slope is proportional to both the first and second slopes above. This provides us now with an accurate graphical comparison between these three measured long-term dimming rates. And finally, since the most recent two measured long-term dimming rates are so close to each other in time, we will use the latest one. The slope of this most recent long-term dimming rate has been determined to be 1.07% per year. So let's represent this fourth dimming rate by another red line whose slope is proportional to the other slopes above. 
This now provides us with a accurate graphical comparison between all four long-term dimming rates. So if we were to take these four slopes and put them together hill to toe, keeping them in order of the oldest measured slopes to the most recent slopes, this is the basic shape of the graph of the long-term dimming of Tabby Star. It should be observed that the slope of the long-term dimming of Tabby Star starts off slowly at first, but continues to get faster and faster as time progresses. This curve of this graph represents acceleration, similar to a body being accelerated by a constant applied force. Now, if we compare the graph of the exponentially decaying long-term dimming of a star that has absorbed a planet with the graph of the long-term dimming of Tabby star, you will notice a stark difference between the two. As a matter of fact, they're exact reciprocals of each other. The planet-eating star starts dimming at a very high rate at first and then slows its dimming rate way down as it approaches its equilibrium state. It eventually stops dimming once there. Tabby star, on the other hand, starts off very slow dimming rate at first and continues to accelerate its dimming rate as time moves on. The extrapolation of this curve is one where tabby star will have no output flux once the curve terminates. This has never been observed in nature for a star to behave this way. The natural way is for the long-term dimming to follow an exponential decaying profile, and the unnatural one is an exponential accelerating profile. So from this basic shape of the long-term dimming of Tabby Star, it will continue to accelerate its dimming as time moves forward and will abruptly terminate once the star's flux output goes to zero. An extrapolation of this curve with the measured dimming rate suggests that Tabby Star will fade to black within this century. So the planet colliding theory just does not match the measured accelerating long-term dimming rate of Tabby Star, and hence, we disregard this theory as applicable to Tabby Star.